So first of all, I'd just like to give you a bit of a brief overview of um, Gallagher's design process. Um, over the past five or six years, we've implemented a um, learning first principles about our, our design process, which is sort of similar to that um, that, the, um, that Toyota use over in Japan. And that basically looks at um, understanding customer needs and insights, um, validating uh, our design concepts, and then progressing those into the, um, into the market. Um, as part of that design process, Gallagher has also developed their own kind of three-step process, which um, the first step is, is our discover phase, where we actually go out and empathise with our customer um, define the opportunity that we're looking at. Uh, the next step is our design phase. This is where we um, look at the concepts, come up with solutions, um, and validate our designs. Uh, we use a lot of tools in this area, um, you know, prototyping, um, validating, and using test procedures. Finally, we have our, our delivery phase, which is actually getting the product ready for market. Um, making sure we've optimised the design from our customer insights and uh, starting to plan our market research. So the case study I'm going to talk to you about today is our ringtop post which we launched uh, back in 2014. To give you an idea, we wanted to first of all understand what our market was. So we um, went out and we visited a whole number of farmers understanding what kind of fencing products they used. Um, some of you may be aware or may not be, but um, most farmers use portable fencing products to manage their, their products and pastures. Um, these, these portable fencing products typically consist of an electric fence wire, some kind of reel to store your wire, and some lightweight portable posts. So as I said, we were really keen on trying to understand how farmers used these, these products, what issues they had, and any kind of improvements that we could make. So as part of our new design process, we used the discover phase to get out there and visit these farmers. We wanted to walk in their shoes, we wanted to understand all of the issues that they had and try and identify any improvements. So approximately five years ago, we set up a team of engineers and product managers, and we went out into the field and we actually looked at how farmers used their products. We wanted to see how they transported the fencing products to and from their fields. We wanted to see how they stored their products, and we also wanted them to demonstrate any issues that they had. And you can see with the bottom photo, we even discovered that farmers were using the common garden hose to replace their their insulators on their, on their pigtails. This was a kind of a key insight that we got from this research. So we took all this information back to our office and we started, um, and we actually collated all the information and we came up with five key insights for the, for the post. The first one was um, coming up with a robust head that wouldn't cut through or give electric shocks. The second one was that we wanted to be able to have a product that was easy to use, even in rocky ground. We also, um, farmers kind of identified that they wanted a, a light post. They were having to put up longer and longer fences and carrying 20 pigtails can weigh up to eight kilos. So being able to reduce the weight that they carried was an important factor. And one other important factor was tangleability. Now this is a term that we've actually generated ourselves is basically the amount of effort required to separate pigtails. And if you're a farmer, <laughs> you'll know how hard it is to separate pigtails when they're in a large bunch. So with these key insights, we were able to enter into the design phase of our, um, of our project. We were able to identify the knowledge gaps from our insights that we gathered from farmers. We were able to work out what we needed to understand about how, how the posts tangled each other. Could we actually address that and fix that? Could we actually look at the size of the, of the foot and reduce the material so that we could actually make it lighter for farmers while still 
maintaining a, a strong and quality product. We also wanted to have a look at the, um, the design of the post. So we separated the, our post into two, into two objects, the foot and the head. They were the key parts of, of the product. And we used an ideation phase to go through and generate as many ideas as we could for our post, uh, for our foot. The idea was that this was a quick and simple way of getting as many ideas as you wanted out, out there and get you to think about uh, new ways of doing things. During our ideation phase for the foot, we were looking, we were using um, tangleability as a, as a direction. We wanted to make sure that we could make the foot strong enough, so we were looking at ideas on how we could reduce weight but make sure that our foot maintained a strength. We repeated the exercise again on the head of design of our post. You can see we had a large number of different kind of concepts that we were throwing around as ideas. Some of these were exploring different material combinations. Can we have a hard material on the inside of our eyelet and a soft material on the outside? What about changing the shape? Could we go with an oblong shape or a round shape? What would centralising the head over the centre shaft of the, of the post do? Would that help us? So once we had managed to get a whole bunch of ideas, we could then start looking at combining them in different combinations of foot and head designs. As part of our ideation phase, we wanted to prototype as many ideas as we possibly could. So we had an, a selection of, of posts with different foot designs, different head designs, and we could see how they felt. The purpose of this was just to look at the product as, it's, as it stood, could we actually pick up wires and not have any problems with tangling? These were just basic ideas for, um, for us just to look at. They were, they were just functional, um, touchy-feely type of stuff. Um, we weren't wanting to um, apply a lot of force to them, so they were brittle. Some of the products that we were using were, some of the prototyping techniques were kind of brittle. But it allowed us to focus our design. Um, throughout the, the, uh, the design process we used a lot of different 3D printing models and we were able to use them to, to identify where we wanted to trim parts away and it, I don't think you can see it on there but some of the models that we actually made we would make them and then actually trim parts away again so that they were completely different to that, the model that we made. In conjunction with prototyping, we needed to look at what was causing tangle, tangle problems with our pigtails. We wanted to uh, set up some tests and do some baselines so further on down the track we would know that any improvements that we made were actually an improvement on our pigtail rather than just kind of saying, oh yeah, this is a, a better pigtail. We wanted to be able to quantify it. So this is a selection of pictures of um, one of our staff members just kind of representing, trying to put up a fence. You know, we wanted to set up a test to, to simulate being able to use pigtails. Uh, a lot of pigtails are stored in barrels, and that's another way of trying to trying to get pigtails out of a barrel. It's like um, a mission. You basically got to tip the barrel upside down and separate them because they're the feet kind of just tangle up. So we set up a test and experiment to do that where we. Um, had say 40 pigtails in a barrel and the, and the idea was pull out 10 as fast as you could and we timed that. We were applying loads to the, um, to the foot to see how much force it took to bend them. Once we'd done all of that validation testing and prototyping we wanted to kind of focus our, our designs onto a couple of designs um, and we wanted to um, confirm what direction we wanted to proceed with our pigtail. Um, in, a, in conjunction with this, we were also felt that it was important that we made a prototype tool so that we could actually mould physical samples that were actually of the material that we wanted to use in the final product, have, a, have something that was a lot more representative of the final product so we could actually get uh, good insights from our farmers when we went back and spoke to them. So we had three designs. The first design was a relative, relatively conservative design. 
I've got a sample down the back if anybody wants to have a look at them. We kind of decided we would centralise the head and mould a, a plastic head on top, but we would actually stick it to a current pigtail foot so that we were going and doing a half step, you know, make a half, kind of a, a hybrid type um, um, pigtail. Our, our next option was a little bit left field. We want, one of the issues that we had with our, with our customer interests was um, the insulation was getting cut through with um, poly wire and tapes. Well, let's get rid of the insulation and put that in a completely different area. So on this one here, we had a, had a steel formed head and we put our electrical insulation at a completely different location. So we wanted to see if that was something that farmers would be interested in. And our third design was what we finally termed our tangle-free pigtail, which once again had the centralised head where there were no tangle points on it. But we also had um, developed a, um, a tangle-free foot where um, we had taken away all of the catch points on that, on that and allowed ourselves a, um, a design that was going to provide us with a, a quicker um, method of getting it out of a barrel or, or, or when you held it in a bunch. So these three designs were able to answer a lot of questions individually and together. So we then went back and the, the um, benchmarking and testing that we did on our old version of pigtails, we then repeated again and we tested all of our concepts, see whether they had improvements on, our, um, on their benchmark results. We went through and we tested the, the wear resistance of the materials tested the um, storage in a barrel, um, loaded up the, um, the plastic foot to see if it was strong enough. We even demonstrated that you could pick a quad bike up with these posts. We then took those three designs along with three current products and we took them out to farmers. So we'd already gone out and asked farmers what their key issues were. We wanted to then go back out and see if we had actually addressed those issues. But we wanted to get um, feedback from them without it, them actually having any understanding of um, our design thinking. So we presented these pigtails and asked them to rank them from one to six. So what we discovered with this was that farmers were a little bit sceptical about um, taking on new ideas in their pigtails. They, they basically said to us that, yep, the ideas look good, but we don't really know how they perform. We want to be able to to use them. And we said, well, that's great because um, we're going to leave them with you. But before that, we identified that about 70%, 75% of them, of farmers, were kind of keen on sticking with the current design. So it was kind of, oh, are we actually going down the right path here? But one of the positives that we did get out of it was that one of our our designs was actually getting a bit of um, a bit of traction in the, with farmers. They kind of could see that it had a potential. So we left a bunch of twenty of each of those concepts with farmers and let them use them for three months, and then we returned. And when we returned, we asked, we repeated the process again. We asked them, can you please rank these in one to six? Give us all your feedback on what you th thought about these new designs. And that's one to six again from left to right. This time we had a resounding result. More than 70% of the farmers that we actually surveyed liked our new uh, tangle-free design. Uh, they found that they, they, yeah, they found that it was easy to separate, which was a tick on our first customer insight. Um, they found that the post was easier to put up, even in rocky ground, which was another tick for our insight. So we were kind of thinking, oh, yep, that's good. They found that they could carry a lot more. And they also didn't get electric shocks because we'd, they had identified that we had actually taken the steel out of the head and were able to provide them with a wear-resistant material. We even had one farmer comment to us that um, some of his staff were racing to get to, the, uh, to the new, our new pigtail because it was so much easier for them to put up and it saved them a lot more time. 
So this feedback that we got kind of confirmed that we had actually answered the key insights that we were looking at with, when we did our first ins, um, insight gathering. Yeah, so with all of that, we, we knew that we were able to deliver a product that was going to hit um, our target market. We were able to address all of the issues that farmers had. So we could then move into our manufacturing phase or delivery phase. So some of the um, some of the comments that farmers made when um, when we were talking to them on on our second visit, they liked the head design, but they said, "Oh, we need to make the head a little bit bigger so we can fit a, um, a an insulated handle through it." So we modified our design to accommodate that. They were still a little bit sceptical about getting an electric shock, so we add, said, "Well, we can add a little bit of material to the bottom of our of our head." The other thing that um, they said was that oh the, the foot on our prototype was a little bit small so could you make that a little bit bigger so these were relatively minor changes to our our initial prototypes that we took out to the farmers but they were relatively easy to implement and we could actually get that done really quickly you can also see that um, I put some inserts in there of some of our fairly radical designs that we originally had way back at the beginning of the project and you can see that even though we went through the process and people kind of sort of were very sceptical about some of these original kind of concepts, our final product actually had a lot of similarity to something that was very radical way back and, it allowed, and having these, gathering these insights allowed us to actually stretch the boundaries of, um, of coming up with a new design and um, got people thinking a lot more about, you know, making sure that we were following the innovation path. So pretty much in summary, being able to get out and do a lot of ideation right at the beginning of the project allowed us to identify a market opportunity. Um, it also gave us an opportunity to look at what we were designing and take it back to, the back to the industry and get customer feedback on what we were designing and make sure that we were actually designing the product the way that, we were, that they were wanting it to be done. It also helped provide us with a mar marketing opportunity so we could actually present the information that was um, needed when we were um, had the product in the store. So hopefully that's kind of highlighted that um, gathering insights early on in a project can actually definitely help you with your product development and um, processes of getting products to market. Thank you.